let's have a look at the idea and philosophy behind liquid democracy. Before that, I'd like to touch on uh, the notion of uh, direct and uh, rep representative democracy. So, a direct democracy is a system in which people make decisions by themselves without having to uh, elect anybody on their behalf to do that for them. Um, so, as a result, this can uh, this is a system that uh, has better control, it has better accountability, and it also has uh, fairness involved um, in it. And uh, people feel like they have a better say in the decision making process. So, a con of such system, uh, such a system, uh, is that uh, it's been observed that this can result in poor participation when the number of voters are large, uh, and uh, people may not even uh, participate in the uh, election process. So, it can result in a fair uh, number of votes being wasted. Um, so, uh, so this is what I was talking about. Uh, in 2009, Facebook decided to conduct an experiment uh, uh, where uh, they decided to conduct an election uh, for people to uh, have a say in their uh, policies. But it was observed that only 0.3% of the Facebook users actually ended up participating in the election process. Thus, this experiment was uh, very short-lived. So the next form is something which we may be uh, more familiar with, and this is actually the notion of uh, representative uh, democracy uh, or indirect democracy, where people basically uh, spend some time to elect a representative who can actually who uh, make decisions on their behalf, and uh, it's usually done uh, for a tenure and uh, uh, for maybe uh, say five years, and uh, that's how it works. So representative democracy is like where uh, competent representatives may be elected on the people's uh, behalf and uh, they'll be spending all their time in making decisions for the people uh, who elected them. So, so as a result, this can, uh, I mean, uh, the pro of such a system is that this can result in better participation since uh, only uh, a, a few of the people are involved in the decision making process and uh, these representatives generally tend to be uh, subject experts as well. So, it can result in better decisions. Uh, the con, however, is that uh, here uh, the control is lost and thus there's poor transparency and there can be power abuse and people may not be satisfied with the decisions that uh, their representatives uh, um, may have made and uh, there are also high barrier, barriers to entry for uh, uh, people uh, who would like to become representatives. So the con is, uh, uh, the, the list of cons are like uh, pretty uh, large. So what can we do to improve things? What can we do to make things better? So uh, what if we tweak the model? So is to combine the best of both the worlds. Uh, so we want uh, direct participation as well as dynamic representation. So the word dynamic here and the word liquid in liquid democracy, the meaning of both the words would become uh, clear in the upcoming slides. But for now, let's just try to understand this uh, new voting model, uh, our new voting world uh, with the help of this uh, diagram. So here, every node in the graph basically represents a, a, a voter, a single voter, that is each circle represents a voter and each voter has one vote in the beginning and uh, the voter basically has a choice. Uh, the voter can either vote by himself uh, like uh, the uh, these nodes on the right or the nodes can basically delegate, the voters can basically delegate their votes and uh, here basically uh, this no voter is transferring uh, his vote here and uh, this voter is transferring his vote here as well. So, and uh, this node gets a total votes of three. Basically, it has a weight of three. Uh, it had one uh, by itself and in the beginning, and uh, two, it has received two votes from uh, two new voters. And similarly, uh, this receives a, a, one vote, and this receives a single vote from a voter. And uh, if this voter delega uh, delegates his vote further, so basically, if these three nodes decide to delegate, so we basically have three plus two plus two, which is seven and plus one more vote that it, it had at the beginning. So basically we have eight votes and this uh, single voter is now having a weight of eight in the election process. And if this voter decides to delegate, so basically that would mean eight plus three. So this voter is delegating uh, his votes as well. So if that happens, so we have eight plus three plus one, which is 12. So that one vote is the vote that each voter had by default at the beginning. So, so this is how uh, the basic model of uh, liquid democracy works. So basically, each voter has an option to delegate uh, the votes or it can participate in the election process. The voter can participate in the election process by themselves, uh, like these nodes. 
on the right, like which are kind of highlighted with the help of LM. So they'll be kind of making the decision. They'll be voting uh, for a particular issue uh, at the end of uh, the election. So let's have a look at uh, liquid democracy in uh, detail. And uh, the uh, the basic model of liquid democracy has the following components. So we basically have the direct democratic component where uh, each voter can directly vote uh, on uh, a political issue. And uh, the flexible delegation component, uh, that is we had uh, a dynamic representation uh, principle uh, where a voter can basically decide to delegate uh, on his or her behalf uh, on basically he has he or she has a flexibility to delegate votes according to the policy. So uh, for different policies, the voter may actually uh, decide to behave uh, uh, differently. So I can either, uh, let's say I'm confident to uh, vote on a particular issue A, while I may not be confident to vote on, on a different, different issue. So when it comes to, let's say, uh, sports, uh, uh, let's, let's say I'm not interested in cricket, so I would like to delegate uh, all uh, decisions uh, uh, pertaining to cricket, while uh, I would like to vote when it comes to uh, college or uh, school issues. So basically that's the flexible delegation component where the voter can decide to behave uh, differently according to uh, the issue and uh, I can even uh, delegate it to different person according to the issue. So that is the flexible delegation component. The, the third one is something that we had seen was the meta delegation component. So there's also this idea of proxy voting where a single voter can basically uh, delegate his vote, uh, vote to uh, another uh, voter. But what is actually liquid about this liquid democracy is the concept of meta delegation that is a voter can basically uh, delegate his the, the delegated votes as well and uh, so as we've seen here uh, this voter it basically had a weight of three and now it is delegating that vote to the next voter and this voter is again delegating the delegated votes and this goes on so that's called the meta delegation component and uh, and the last one is another interesting component and that's called the, uh, the instant recall component. An instant recall component is basically uh, the fact that a voter can basically decide to recall his delegation at any given point in the election process. So let's say I'm not happy with uh, the way my uh, uh, the, the delegated person, the delegated voter uh, voted. So I can revoke that at any given point. I can recall that at any given point and uh, the graph will have to be updated accordingly. So. So that's the instant recall component. So we, we basically uh, have the following components in a basic uh, model of liquid democracy, the direct democratic component, the flexible uh, delegation component. Uh, we have the meta delegation component and uh, we also have the interesting instant recall component. And so let's have a look at uh, places where uh, liquid democracy has been implemented. Uh, of course, it's in a very nascent stage. It's uh, an em emerging model, but uh, so an interesting place is Google Votes. Google decide uh, Google employees decided to uh, test this out in uh, their internal social network called Google Plus. So this was the experiment that uh, Google, Google conducted, and uh, as you can see, this uh, liquid democracy uh, can be extremely useful in a corporate uh, setting where uh, several uh, decisions may need to be made uh, pertaining to employees on a daily basis. And uh, so you can have a look at uh, this paper to uh, so as to know uh, details. Uh, regarding the implementation and so basically uh, uh, between 2012 to 2015 uh, Google Words was basically used on 370 issues and uh, uh, they've been used by over 20,000 Googlers and uh, so and several decisions uh, pertaining to food, uh, coding and uh, so on uh, were made using uh, the platform that use liquid democracy. See the other uh, the other instances are uh, basically pirate pa parties in uh, Germany. They've used uh, uh, an open source uh, software called uh, Liquid Feedback that uh, was implemented using uh, principles of liquid democracy. Uh, same goes with this uh, platform called Democracy OS, uh, which is proposed by a party in Argentina, and uh, that also pertains to the uh, notion of uh, liquid democracy. And so these are just. Uh, uh, real life examples of uh, uh, liquid uh, democracy, basically liquid democracy in action. So that was an introduction to liquid democracy. Hope you liked it. And uh, we'll be exploring a lot more uh, details on the same in the coming videos. Thank you.